We're getting an inside look this morning at how researchers at UW Medicine are racing to detect the Omicron variant this morning. King 5's Angelique Cockaday live at this genome sequencing lab. It's one of the best labs in the country, we're told, Angelique. You're getting an exclusive walkthrough here. Tell us about what they're looking for and how they're doing it. Yeah, Jake, good morning. So the lab here is capable of doing about 2,000 genetic tests a week. Right now they're operating about 90% of that, but they're also getting between up to 10 to 20,000 samples a day. And that's from all over the country. So to help us give us a tour of their process here, I'm joined by Dr. Greninger. Good morning. Good morning. So walk us through that process. What are you guys as scientists looking for when detecting Omicron? Well, I think the first thing to know is that the clinical testing is completely unaffected by Omicron. So we do the normal samples that come into the lab, normal PCR tests, and that those can detect Omicron, detect COVID just fine. After we have, so now that with Omicron in the picture, with, uh, we take uh, those positives and we test them on another PCR platform that looks at three targets and Omicron, this test is affected by Omicron, so one of those targets will drop out and if, if it's Omicron. Right. And so that's what we're currently doing is taking those positive samples, reflexing them to that sort of intermediate quick test and that allows us to find if we want to uh, sequence faster, it allows us to more quickly go through all of our positives to find ones that we want to sequence. Okay. Now we'll probably already be sequencing the other ones. So here in the lab, what we do is we extract RNA from those samples. So these are these large uh, high throughput extractors. We get RNA out of the, each of the samples. And then sure. we come over here and we set up uh, uh, PCRs on the bench. Um, so we also have automated setup. We have sort of manual setup uh, over here and those go to PCR machines, and then the RNA is also taken to different instruments where we sequence the entire genome. So we do little PCRs over the entire genome and sequence the full genome of the virus. Actually, one of the things, one of the questions right now is how those little PCRs across the entire genome might be affected by Omicron. A few of them might drop out, and then we get the whole thing, so it's gonna be okay if one little part drops out. But there's sort of open questions there. Sure. Um, and to, to really get the, the definitive, if this is Omicron or not, you really need the genome sequence. You have right? to have the genome. Yeah. You have to have the genome because there actually could be other ways that you see that sort of that sort of dropout uh, in in other viruses. It's, it's very limited now. For alpha, right? That was a big one that had it. Sure. So then, you know, uh, conventional testing is unaffected. And then I want to show you the sequencing here. Okay. Yeah. So um, while we're walking over to the uh, genome sequencing lab, talk to me about how you guys are feeling. You were saying earlier, it kind of reminds you of spring 2020, this Omicron variant. Well, I think it's, it's tough. I mean, certainly we're, um, we have more immunity on board. So we have T-cell immunity. We have some cross-neutralizing immunity from uh, vaccines and from prior, some prior infections. But we're just now getting the data out of South Africa, how that affected. There was a paper that went online yesterday showing you know, sort of a three to four fold increase in reinfection rate with Omicron. It's not a good sign. And we have the next question is how that affects the vaccines, right. how that affects titers. And so every day at like 10 a.m. I check the South African case numbers. Yeah. So like as those come out to see how it's spreading in South Africa and just to kind of get a feel for what's coming in the future. But yeah. I think people are very, and people here are concerned, Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. Well, we're looking at here, this genome sequencing, it says estimated completion. Walk us through a little bit. Oh, yeah, happening. so so this is our sequencing groups. This is uh, a NextSeq 2000. Uh, we have some automated library preparations going on over there. And so these runs can take anywhere from maybe 12 hours to sort of 24 to 30 hours, depending on how you're running the sequencers. Uh, and so that is a little bit slower in terms of getting that the data back. It's not as fast as PCR, sure, but it's still pretty sure, quick. Sure. Um, and so this allows us to, to, these are incredibly high throughput instruments. They can give over a, a billion sequences wow. uh, as you get each genome. So we actually run like two to 300, 400 samples at a go. Awesome. Yeah. It's really, it's really incredible to see what you guys are doing here. And I'm told the next step, if Omicron is detected, is to send that information right away to the state health department. For now, reporting live in Seattle, Angela Cockaday, King 5 News. What a tour there from Dr. Greninger. Please give him our thanks. 200 to 300 samples, billions of samples of each. Uh, boy, oh boy, that is a lot of work happening there.